Hello everyone, my name's Anthony Cummings and welcome to this. This is the introductory course to Taoism. Now, um, I lead and run a school of samurai warfare called Natori Ryu and we have permission from the families in Japan and we, we're collecting all the old scrolls and bringing them back to life. But part of that is also understanding Japanese religion, Japanese philosophy, which of course is fundamentally based on Chinese ideas. So what I'm doing is I'm going through this Taoism for Dummies. It's by um, a PhD, Jonathan Herman. He's the Associate Professor for Religious Studies in Georgia State University. So don't be put off by these titles, Taoism for Dummies. These things are really well researched. So we're gonna use that. And what I'm gonna do is basically go on a journey and discover about Taoism. And I'm gonna go through it, through this book and lesson by lesson or video by video, I'm gonna break down what he says and then give it to you guys. So if you're interested in samurai warfare, of course, stick with us with the Book of Samurai. And if you're interested in Taoism, let's keep up and let's get this um, video series going. The first thing we need to realize is that uh, Lao Tzu in his famous book uh, is the historical foundation of Taoism. He's the history, he's the first point where we see it come to life. But there's more on that in a bit. Now Taoism is one of China's three philosophical schools. So you've got Confucianism, you've got Taoism and you've got Buddhism. Of course Buddhism is from India but um, it, it is massive in China or was massive and it's one of the three that go together and sort of integrate with each other throughout time. Taoism is between 2000 and 2500 years old roughly. They can't precisely date it because they don't know its true origins. Now you'll notice I've been saying Taoism and some people say Taoism and some people say Taoism and you know they try to... What we have to remember is that there are basically two kinds of Romanization. That means bringing you know Chinese words and characters into our language and they're never truly correct. There's just the closest we can possibly get. So we, we it's a mixed D and T sound but it doesn't matter. It's like this, we've got the Book of Ninja. This is one of the books we translated and some people say Ban Sen Shukai and some people say Man Sen Shukai and they argue about how it is. I think people shouldn't argue about Taoism and Taoism. I think it's just the simple fact if that's the word it's coming. It's like Confucius was never called Confucius. His Chinese name is pronounced slightly different. So, you know, I think we should just get over that. Today, Taoism can be divided basically into Northern and Southern types. Um, we'll go through more of that as we go along. But one of the massive factors is the fact that Taoism is not the same throughout, it's not universal. The same as Christianity is not universal, the same as like Islam and Christianity come from a single source, same as Judaism and it all pulls off together. Taoism is equally as complicated with equally lots of subdivisions within its orders and some of them don't even deal with some of the major things you would think they deal with and some are very ritualistic. So when we say Taoism that's just one word that goes across a band of multiple avenues that possibly point to the same idea. So as you know, Christianity follow Christ, Buddhism follow Buddha, and you could say Taoism follows the Wei or the Tao. Now uh, the Wei in Japanese, let's stick with that, is Do, uh, and it just means pathway or road, but of course it has the connotations of the underlying principle behind everything in the universe, and therefore Taoism is, is those people who follow that principle or try to interact with that fundamental nature of um, the universe. Now it's interesting to know that the um, the concept of the Wei, the Do, existed before Lao Tzu and is equally found in other things as well. This is what confused me and I found it very confusing that in Buddhism they start talking about the Wei and Taoism they're talking about the Wei and you're like, which one has the way? So uh, I tried to find the answer to that, but it's extremely complicated. So let's hope as we go through the series, we get a bit of a better understanding of that. If not, I shall contact the associate professor myself. Now we humans interact with the way in through a concept called Wu Wei, which is no action. Now, of course, that is, it's one of the fundamental concepts in Taoism, and it doesn't mean stand around doing nothing. It basically means do not go against the grain of the situation. Uh, do not try and force a situation. The idea is that you flow with the circumstances around you. But as I know we're gonna get much deeper into Wu Wei as we go along, so let's hope we get lots of decent information on that. 
Now I've come across three primary principles for Taoism. The first primary principle is basically remaining in a natural state. Do not change yourself. Do not push yourself into something. Don't, you know, um, try to be fo force your true nature into another form. Uh, that's not the way you should remain in a natural state. The second prime principle is to interact with external things fluidly, with no effort, no problems. Something bad happens, you roll with it. Something good happens, you roll with it. Don't sort of like push yourself about and, um, you know, follow on and latch on. You just flow with, or go with the way if you like, go with the flow. The third primary principle, which uh, does appear in Buddhism as well, especially Zen, is actually uh, the mind in the mirror, and that's to reflect reality clearly. That's not to have something and you twist it and turn it into something it's not. You have to polish your mind, which is the mirror or the clear water, until you reflect the moon or you know society around you or events around you in a proper way. So you can actually see what's realistically going on and you take away all the filters that we as humans put in there. Now, Taoism is heavily based on um, two things. That's the uh, yin-yang in Japanese, that's inyo, and that's light and dark, positive, negative, male, female. And then you also get um, what's called the five elements theory. So the five, you know, uh, fire, water, earth, etc. Uh, are, there are two distinct types of those, so we have to be careful which one we go down. Um, there's a very Japanese oriented one which has its fun it has its basis somewhere else but there's also a very Chinese one so we have to stick with that now students of Natoryu you should be now clocking and thinking ah yeah we've seen in yo yin yang loads we've seen the five elements theory a lot and it's very very difficult it's very very complicated and um, you know but hopefully through this we'll get a better understanding of how Natori or Isui Sensei has integrated that which must be Taoism into his work. Did you know there are actually about 1,000 to 1,500 texts in the Taoist canon so there are so many texts and many of these don't even deal with philosophy all the way they deal with ritual magic, folklore, uh, esoteric uh, alchemy there's lots of weird sub branches to go off so you've probably come to this video thinking about the way and Lao Tzu and Allah but actually Taoism has a very very big um, ritual dogmatic um, religious system with it which of course is not in Lao Tzu's work in fact he says don't do that but you know let's uh, let's let's explore that now there are two forms of Taoist alchemy. The first form is physical, actual alchemy, ingesting certain things, you know, checking what you eat and on all that. And the second form is internal alchemy, like changing your chi, your ki, uh, you know, dealing with everything internally that way, uh, which of course gets very complicated. And uh, the two famous ones are Tai Chi and Qigong, you know, they have come from a Taoist source. Now that brings us to the end of the first video. Uh, that is just a basic overview. I've just broken down the uh, the introduction and that is the information that is in the introduction and then what we'll do is next time is go through the next chapter and start to bring out a better understanding of Taoism. I hope you enjoyed that. Subscribe and like of course join us at Natoryu if you like samurai warfare or if you like ancient culture and I uh, look forward to seeing you in part two.